My name is John, and I am here from Cincinnati on behalf of my son, Christopher Cornell, Rahil Marusu Beta. Uh, we were totally devastated when this happened. I mean, completely blindsided. Uh, he was always such a good kid. Big Bobby. When this happened, there was a lot of press. And I even went on the news and said, there is just a big mommy's boy. His best friend was a cat. You know, I cried. It hurt. I hurt for him. You know, my life was almost over. You know, I hurt for him. He's 24 years old. But me years since. You know, I'm, I'm stuck. You know, I'm still stuck in this hatred. And all this anger. Because I know what they did. I know the way they did it. I've been to the system. I've been having to work. I sheltered Christopher. You know, I didn't want him to grow up the way I did. I wanted better for, we all we all want better for our children. And how, how, do I, how do I live with him? Secret Service has been to see him twice. Trying, still trying to get him to cooperate, he won't cooperate. All they promised him a lesser sense to be a cooperator is not in our blood. You know, my mother was a full blood to see him getting stuck in our ear. Yeah, you know, it's not in our blood. And, but how do I live with them going to tell if they tell him before they leave? We make sure people like you never get out of here. How do I, how do I live? You know, it's. It's terrible. And, and being in there on a terrorism charge, he, you know, they, they have big targets on their back. Most of the people that run these prisons are all ex military. They hate Islam. They hate, they hate everything of, you know, about the culture. It's, it's, but I, I don't know, like I said, I'm just stuck with all these mixed emotions. I've been silent. I, I've had people tell me not to tell my story, to be silent, you know. It seems like every time we do try to help someone, it makes things worse on him, and that's my fear. Because if I tell my story, it's what really happened. The way all this went down, they take it out on him. He suffers. I do. I hurt every day for that kid. You know, I still cry every day. Uh, they cut off his phone privileges for six months for speaking to a journalist, which it was not a live radio broadcast. Oh, well, when he was in the county jail, he had made a phone call to a news station, and they thought it was a hoax. And uh, so the news station calls back 15 minutes later and says, was that from him? And the, the lieutenant at the jail facilitated him to do an interview, which probably some of you may have seen. Oh, it's been three years ago. It was all over the world. All over the world is the stupid interview that he did. But he has mental health issues. He's had mental health issues ever since he was a little boy. We tried, we tried to get him help. And after he, he had gotten older, uh, you know, he came to me and he said, Dad, they're going to put me on medicine. They're going to label me some kind of a nut. And it'll follow me around the rest of my life. And I, you know, because I, I've seen the different changes that he could go through, you know. <coughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. Much.